perspective as, as someone you know, who's a global player and you come here and you visit and you've, you've seen, as, as you said, you're happy with the investment in Bangalore, but for us to really compete on the global stage, what do you think still needs to be done? Well, I think relentless, relentless investment is needed. It, it takes many, many years to compete on a global stage in information technology. I think, I think India has done a spectacular job in services, as you've, we've all seen that play out over the last few years. But now the next thing is to take it to the hardware and the software, uh, the, the, the global products on software, not just services. That takes a global scale. It takes many, And I think it also takes uh, some degree of, of, of high degree of consumption of the product locally. You know, how can you, how can you create a global standard global products if you, if you don't really have high consumption here. And one, one of the reasons I think that the United States has led in information technologies is because it's also been one of the most deeply penetrated countries, you know, in terms of, of PC use and, and, and broadband and those kinds of things anywhere in the world. You know, so, so to me, the, the government's recent activities on driving broadband, particularly as, as, it, as a spectrum auction comes up for things like WiMAX, um, can be leading indicators of what needs to be done to drive local consumption, which will then put India, I think, in a position to be able to drive ultimately global products. Okay. Also talking about your development centers, what are some of the future plans you have for them? For instance, so will you be looking at uh, hiring more as well in India? I, I don't, I, in general, Intel is not going to be hiring a lot of people this year. Uh, we're actually shrinking the company still this year, mostly in manufacturing. Uh, and, and as part of the restructuring that we talked about earlier. Um, going forward, though, you know, the, the, this is a development site for us, and we would like to grow here. Uh, we have space down in Bangalore, and it would be nice to fill it up. Has the nature of your work in India changed, would you say? Any breakthrough innovations that are coming along? Well, uh, the nature's changed just by virtue of what we've done over the last 15 years, from sales to uh, information technology, software development, and now, now global product development. So yes, it's changed pretty dramatically, and, and our workforce has grown as a result of it. Uh, as I said earlier, we, we don't do localized products, for the most part, at the chip level. So the products that we're designing here are done for the worldwide market, and, and they've, they've been um, awfully good. They've been awfully good at, in terms of creating market share, uh, leadership and performance, and those kinds of things. So also talking about uh, broadband penetration, because that's something that you've also been talking about here in India, do you also feel uh, that uh, more increased broadband penetration will help uh, to get uh, to reach more segments of the market in India going ahead, in the rural space particularly? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I, you know, this is a classic chicken and egg problem. I'm not sure that paradigm exists in India, but you know, it, with, without, without the broadband network, you really can't have the PC deployment because there's nothing to connect it to. The internet is the, the predominant usage model of PCs today. So uh, as we solve the network problem and the cost problem for PCs, I think the enablement is there and the conditions are there to be able to drive, drive growth. So give us a sense of uh, where, does, where India fits in exactly in your plans because, I mean, of course we know it's high on the priority list or we assume such because your visit itself and you know all the news that's coming in the market is growing but just give us a sense in terms of compared to your other regional markets. Well you know this has been a market that we've been excited about for some time and I think that, that uh, if you look at the penetration of things like cell phones mm -hmm. it shows that there is a propensity to adopt new technology rapidly so, so now that the price of computing is coming down to places where it's much more affordable now with, with things new products like net tops and netbooks you're starting to see, I think, penetration. You know, I was told that the net top business uh, has grown substantially. It's doubling quarter after quarter now for four quarters in a row. These are just a new class of machines, and we'll enable those with things like WiMAX to be able to allow the rural parts of India uh, the same kind of accessibility that you can get in, in, the, in the main cities. So I, I think it's on the tipping point of information technology really being deployed much more broadly for things like e-governance, for education, you know, for just general internet accessibility uh, countrywide. How long do you think it's going to take for that to actually happen? Because there has been, you know, some varying reports on really how far that rural penetration has gone. You know, there has been, some, again, some conflicting reports in terms of even the low-cost uh, PC actually taking off off here. What's, what's your well, opinion you know, on that? None, none of these existed. Not, neither of those existed prior to this year. And we've, we've been in WiMAX uh, trials in India, gosh, now for over three or four years. 
uh, and, and people like BSNL are, are doing the trials. And you know, every carrier is is anxiously awaiting the Spectrum auction to be able to then start deploying this technology. So, so you, you know, you, you really can't be disappointed by the rate of the rate because we're now at the point where the technology has been proven out and the Spectrum has become available. S the same thing with low cost. Uh, net tops. You know, th that was an idea two years ago. We created a, a class of products. I brought this little vial. Uh, this is 1,200 atom chips in this vial. We created a class of products that's small enough and cheap enough and powerful enough for these devices that had to be invented. And now they're going into, into computers uh, countrywide. You think that once the 3G auctions do take place, Biomax will take off in a big way? Yeah. Well, tele uh, telecommunication technologies never take off in a big way. I mean, they always have a slow adoption curve, and it's been the same, you know, for every technology for 2G, 3G. Uh, so I, I do think it'll it'll take off. I think that all the all the um, conditions in terms of affordability and the need uh, in terms of rural access are there, and it's by far the cheapest technology to, to connect the country. Um, but I'm not going to predict the penetration rate. That's not my job. You know, people here are, are much better shape to do that. Okay. What are some of the players that you'd be looking at working with over here when it comes to 